Hello. For the next five minutes, you will watch a fragment of Colfax developer training video course titled Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. We recognize that different people prefer different styles of learning. And during our trainings all over the country, we received tremendous amount of requests to conduct a hands-on, practical training with demonstration of real code modifications. To satisfy this need of the community, we are creating a video lecture series, and this is the pilot episode. After theoretical discussions on topics of parallel programming and optimization, we'll also demonstrate real-life code modifications, so that our students can follow along and learn how to apply those new optimization techniques in practice. Thank you, enjoy, and welcome to the parallel world. In this part of our training, we'll continue with optimization of factorization and consider the street mining optimization technique. This technique allows to separate data parallel operations from instructions with data dependency and therefore to improve the performance by at least partially vectorizing the code. To demonstrate this concept, let's take a look at a simple example of histogram calculation. We have array H that contains n elements, n is large, say in tens of millions. The elements of this array are ages of people, say from 0 to 100 years. We'll go through this array and populate a histogram hist that contains m groups. This way we will count the number of people in the age group from 0 to 20 years, from 20 to 40, and so on. Group width in our example is 20 years, this is the width of each age group, this corresponds to m equal to 5. To populate a histogram with the corresponding input data, two operations are performed. The first operation is this. Each element of array H is divided by group width, as shown in line number 4 of this source code snippet. The result is the number of the histogram bean. In the next operation, the corresponding histogram bean, represented by the array hist, is incremented by 1. This is a synthetic workload. However, similar workloads occur, for example, in particle Monte Carlo simulations, where particles are detected and beamed to the corresponding elements of the phase space. Those two combined operations are not automatically vectorizable. Let's try to figure why. The vector length on our Intel Xeon CPU is 256 bits. This fits eight single precision floating point numbers. We could load the first eight elements of array H into the processor's vector register. To calculate histogram indices, each number is divided by the group width. On the hardware level, this separation can be processed with scalar instructions, processing one number at a time. But there is no data dependency here, so instead, this data can be processed in parallel with Intel Xeon CPU's vector registers and vector operations. On Intel CPU, it means processing not one, but eight numbers at a time, and on the own FICO processor, 16 numbers at a time. Now let's take a look at the second line of our code where our histogram counters are incremented. Unfortunately, there is data dependency here because several elements of array age can end up in this same histogram group, and therefore same histogram counters will need to be simultaneously incremented multiple times. Such operations are not supported by vector processing unit on Intel CPUs or coprocessors. This is a case of true vector dependence, and because of it, the compiler will refuse to automatically vectorize the for loop in line 3. This is the optimized version of the code. It performs better because some operations are vectorized. Stroop mining technique applied here allowed to separate vectorizable code of histogram index calculation and non-vectorizable accumulation of histogram counters. It is non-vectorizable due to true vector dependence, as was discussed earlier. Instead of one loop, we now have two nested loops. The outer for loop iterates with a stride, and the inner loop strip mines within the stride. We choose the length of the inner loop to be equal to 16. The reason why we choose 16 is this. 
Vector register owns your own 5 fits, 16 32-bit integers or 16 single precision floating point numbers. We want to pack all of them in one vector register for all 16 operations to be vectorized. So the length of the inner loop must be a multiple of 16. We could have have chosen a greater multiple of 16. However, benchmarking shows that 16 is the optimal value in this case. This is actually typical. The strip mining factor is a parameter that must be tuned for optimal performance. As we will see in the minute, uh, the vectorization report shows that for loop in line 11 is successfully vectorized by the compiler. In addition to strip mining, we made another optimization known as strength reduction. We replaced division by the group width with multiplication by the reciprocal of that number. The division instruction in modern CPUs is significantly slower than multiplication. And because we apply this operation to every element, our algorithm with multiplication should perform much better than with division. Now let's take a look at the performance results of this optimization technique. In the bar chart presented here, we have two groups. The first one on the left shows execution times in seconds of unoptimized code. This code is scalar, in other words, not vectorized. The second group, corresponding to the vectorized version of the code with strip mining, we demonstrated on the previous slide. Green bars correspond to the execution times on the Xeon CPU and blue bars on Intel Xeon 5 coprocessor. With the strip mining vectorization and strength reduction, we were able to improve the performance of our code by the factor of 2.2 on CPU and by a factor of 8.9 on coprocessor. Of course, we see that the coprocessor is not faster than the CPU. This is because our work is not done yet. We have not yet used thread parallelism and we have not yet utilized all 240 logical threads on the coprocessor. We will discuss further optimization in the next module. In the next practical session, we will modify real-life code to apply those optimization techniques, compile and measure the performance of the histogram calculations. Thank you.